Canada made me a promise. It makes all of us a promise, whether we're born here or arrive as immigrants. If you work hard, you get a good life. That anyone from anywhere can do anything. That hard work gets a powerful paycheck that buys affordable food and homes in safe neighborhoods. And that promise, like everything else, is broken after nine years of Trudeau and the NDP liberals. Most of all, he broke our immigration system. Today's immigration flip-flop is a massive admission of failure by Justin Trudeau, an admission that he's not worth the cost or the corruption. With his own MPs working to throw him out, and less than a year from the carbon tax election, Trudeau has suddenly admitted that radical, uncontrolled immigration and policies related to it are partly to blame for joblessness, housing, and health care crises. In fact, let's remember, after nine years of Trudeau, we have one in ten Torontonians lined up at food banks. We have 1,400 homeless encampments across the province of Ontario. Two million Canadians have to go to a food bank every month. Scurvy is making a comeback. We have the worst economy in the G7. Everything is broken. And his immigration minister admits that, the, that immigration is out of control after nine years of liberal policies. They increased population growth by 200% over the last several years alone. Now, Trudeau called anyone who disagreed with these radical policies racist. Now he's the one cutting immigration to, call, to, to pull back on the disastrous mistakes that he made. But worst, he destroyed the best immigration system in the world. A system that had a common sense consensus of conservatives and liberals for 150 years. Immigration was not even controversial before Trudeau came along. How did he do it? He left Roxham Road open for a year after President Biden offered to close it. He removed the visa requirement for Mexico, which caused an explosion of false and fraudulent refugee claims. And he allowed rampant fraud and abuse in the international student program, which has seen as many as 26 kids living in one Brampton basement and countless losing their lives to drugs, gangs, and other chaos on our streets, sent back in body bags to, to countries like India. He allowed ISIS terrorists into Canada, who then went on to try and attack Jews and other Canadian citizens. He's presided over a 251% increase in, in hate, police reported hate crimes. None of these decisions, by the way, were designed to bring workers to help with the COVID labor shortage, because none of those programs are labor programs. Roxham Road is not a labor program. Refugee claimants are not part of a labor program. International students are not supposed to be for labor, but for study. So this excuse is t total nonsense. Trudeau's last minute pre-election reversal cannot be believed. He can't fix the immigration system that he broke. And he now says he's going to cap Im immigration. Well, what else has he said he's going to cap? He said six months ago he was going to cap the number of temporary residents in this country to 5% of our population. Since that time, it's gone up to 7.3%. He said he'd cap the carbon tax at 11 cents a liter. Now it's 17 cents, and he plans to quadruple it to 61 cents. He said he'd cap this year's deficit at $40 billion. It's already $47 billion just six months later. You can't believe anything he says, especially when he's claiming that he will fix what he broke. Common sense conservatives will fix what Trudeau and the NDP liberals broke. We will restore the best immigration system in the world. We will stop the illegal arrival of false refugee claimants by securing our borders, our ports, and our airports. We will end the abuse in the temporary foreign worker program, the international student program, and the refugee program. We will cap population growth so that it is always below the growth in housing, health care, and jobs. And we will, in speaking of health care, we've got 20,000 immigrant doctors, 32,000 immigrant nurses in Canada today who cannot work because they can't get a license. We will create 
in the professions what we did as a country in the trades seven decades ago. We will create a national licensing standard. Provinces can voluntarily adopt a blue seal so immigrant doctors and nurses can take a test, prove they're qualified, and get to work reducing those wait times in our hospitals. We will screen people coming in to, to keep terrorists and criminals out and allow law-abiding people into our country. And when they get here, they will see that the Canadian promise is restored. A promise that anyone from anywhere can do anything. Where it doesn't matter where you come from. It matters where you're going. It doesn't matter who you knew. It matters what you can do. A country where hard work gets you a powerful paycheck. That buys affordable food, gas, and homes in safe neighborhoods. To do it, we will have a common sense plan to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, stop the crime, and repair our broken immigration system. Let's bring it home. The, uh, the announcement this morning said that they're going to cap permanent residents, but they're going to allow, they're going to draw for the coming years from the temporary residents that are here. The people coming in on the temporary foreign workers program or the student program, uh, they wouldn't necessarily be passing the point system that we've used for decades. So. I'd like your thoughts on that, and also, uh, are they able to uh, to make these changes when the legislator, legislature has effectively been shut down for weeks and it, it shows no sign? Is this just a regulatory change as far as you know, or do they have to put it through Parliament? No, they won't do it. And yes, they do need to put these changes through Parliament. Trudeau has paralyzed Parliament by refusing the Speaker's order to hand over criminal evidence in the... RCMP's investigation into the $400 million green slush fund scandal. Um, as for the people who have come here uh, as international students that Trudeau let in in record smashing numbers without housing, jobs, admissions letters to real educational institutions, or money to pay their bills, I don't know what's going to happen to them. He claims he's going to be kicking some of them out. He'll never do that. And he'll never, he, he can't even control our borders. We can't expect that Justin Trudeau will keep any of these frantic, panicked, last minute promises that he's making to reverse his earlier decisions that he's making now when his own MPs are th in the Liberal Party are trying to fire him in an election year. He is a panicked, incompetent, failed Prime Minister who is not worth the cost, the chaos. And the corruption. <clears throat> well, if you want to know what we're going to do, look at what was done in the 150 years before Justin Trudeau. We had the best immigration system in the world. Just nine years ago, we had a housing surplus. We built more houses in 2015 than we added than were necessary to, ha to house the new people coming to the country. Hard to believe. We had one home for every 1.5 new people. And that was a housing surplus. I was housing minister. Why? Because we had a controlled, common sense immigration system that had worked for a century and a half, and Justin Trudeau came along and with reckless abandon, totally demolished it. But we will reverse the reckless, uncontrolled approach that he has brought and bring home the common sense system that worked for a century and a half. Yes, we're going to we're going to link the number of uh, we're going to link population growth to the number of houses, the amount of health care and jobs that are available. So we will have a mathematical formula that ensures that we never grow our population at a faster rate than we grow the availability of jobs, homes, and health care. Okay. Yes. Have you, have you had any conversations with disaffected Liberal MPs about them starting to vote with the opposition or crossing the floor? We, I have had conversations with numerous uh, Liberal MPs. Some of them say that they're worried that the carbon tax will cost them their seats and that they want to vote against Trudeau's radical plan to quadruple the tax to 61 cents a liter. Um, and the, some of them might even be willing to vote non-confidence in Justin Trudeau if that issue comes up again. Obviously, the next election is a 
referendum on Trudeau's 61 cents a litre carbon tax, and countless Liberal MPs have told our caucus that they're terrified they will be demolished by voters at election time if they vote to cripple our economy with that tax. Thanks, everyone.